Greetings! How are you, everybody out there in uh, TV land, YouTube stream land, land YouTube land, you have go. a fun land, no land, whatever kind of land. If you're not, you might be out in the middle of the water, the ocean, on an ocean view, a yacht or a cruise. But whatever you're doing, we want to welcome all of you. We want to say hi to the family members up there in Washington, back in Africa, all of you, even the ones that. Uh, follow my wife on uh, Let Isha Speak. We want to say hi to you. Soon we're working on another uh, uh, takeoff with uh, uh, the uh, Technon to We Are Sons. They're going to speak. You know, the ministry of the sun is really needed because uh, somehow things are being perverted in this hour. As you remember, the last time we focused, we were flowing and I said, what are you speaking? What is on your mind? What is on your lips? What is on your tongue? What is, this is the pay in Hebrew. So, and we said that we would speak the same things. And the Greek term is homologia. Okay, so pay, and then Lashan hara is another one. So you better ooh, stop before you get ahead of yourself and then walk into your own seed that you sown. And that's what happens. This is why you, when you're around worldly people, you got to watch yourself. Okay? Even around your brothers, because some take it for real. Like, did he say that? And then they act too spiritual. And then, you know, here again, they start thinking weird about you. And you pick it up, but you're not mature enough. So you keep feeding that <laughs> furnace. And that furnace, if you remember what the furnace for, it's to put you in it so that it can... Yeah, refine that gold and that silver and that brass. So there's always heat involved. There's always fire. But you want to come into a place now where your words do not hit the ground. Like remember Samuel, if you read the book of Samuel, not one of his words hit the ground. So in doing so, let's keep going here. Let me just quickly say this. Father, we thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear. Father, we thank you that every listener, every, every viewer will catch hold of the Ruach Kadosh. We thank you that he came and he immersed them all. And once they were immersed, they were waiting for the promise of the Father. Have you met the Father on your journey? Or are you just Jesus conscious, 30-fold, a servant? You know, because you go from believers to servants to disciples. So And you never leave because at the believer stage is uh, at the gates of the tabernacle of Moses. Then you hit the laver and <laughs> you go from a believer to a servant. Okay? And then you go to the laver and you may make to through the laver the discipleship entrance. Why am I saying that? Because you might start seeing things from a different view. You no longer look down and go, God, I'm so corrupted. <laughs> because you start seeing the clear water of the washing of the water of the word. The water begins to wash you. The water is so powerful. The water, the mim in Hebrew, the mim is the water. And it's, and how you, remember the, the guy in the parables in Matthew, he said, no one's here to help me in. The angel shows up, he stirs the water, and everybody gets in before me, and I can't get my healing. And Yeshua was there and says, well, what would you like me to do? And he could have said, heal me. And he's like, well, when the angel stirs the water, can you help me get in? See, that's how some of us are. We cannot see from our own eyes that he's in us, coming up on us, and wants to flow through us. He's up on in us so he can flow through us. Come on, let him up on you. Let him up. What am I saying by that? You can work him. He's in your spirit. He's in the very core of your being. You can feel it if you allow that to work. Okay, now, we with the last statement that I left off on the last view was speaking the same things. Homo legia. And I said, speaking those things that pertain unto the kingdom. Do you all remember? You do remember. Okay, now go with me to Ephesians chapter 4. And I want you to see verse 29. Okay, he says, in verse 26, he says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your you on wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor working with his hands for the things which which is good, 
that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let Here's the verse. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Are you speaking things that pertain to the kingdom? Are you speaking things that you're going to experience? You're going to grab hold of and walk into. This is why we got to practice prophesying. You prophesy your raise. You prophesy a promotion. You prophesy a better attitude from the employees, your fellow workers. Why? Because you're going to walk into that if you believe. That's why the Father says take dominion. And then in the garden, back in Genesis, he said that he walked in the cool of the day with Adam. Well, wait, wait, wait. Don't, let's not erase Eve. She was there too. So if, you, if you're male, female, husband, wife, friend and foe, enemies, you're still in his presence. And this is why he's sharing with me to share with you. Don't let anything corrupt come out of your mouth. Let's read that again. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister favor unto the hearers. And grieve not the Ruach Kadosh of Yahuwah, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for the sake of Yeshua, has forgiven you. My, that's a mouthful. Repentance is the first article. You gotta repent, you gotta forgive people, you can't hold grudges. Do you wanna know why a lot of things that were prophesied over you haven't come to pass? Because you still hold some grudges in your heart. You might have had a falling out with your pastor, your elder, your apostle, your wife, your husband, your children, your grandchildren, if you have them, your great-grandchildren. Whatever posture you've taken in your journey in this planet to walk out, we've got to start lining up. Why? Because watch how close this is. In the outer court, there's the gate that every man comes to the gate, the, the tabernacle gate on the outer court, 30 fold, have angels that were needleworked, and man sees those and it's, it makes them look upward. But you're not going to begin to honor and worship angels as you work your, through, your way through that outer court that separates, it's called a veil, but here again we call it a gate. But then you go through the gate and you run into the brazing altar. Why brazing? Because that's where the animal sacrifice took place. That's the beginning of your, yes, your walk of redemption. Your salvation draws nigh. Draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. See, it starts right there at the brazing altar. You can't say, well, I'm in the Holy of Holies and now you're crying out, oh Lord, draw nigh to me and I'll draw. No, it starts back there. This is why it was in the wilderness. The tabernacle was in the wilderness to grab your attention. Fathers, the forefathers, the patriarchs, they spoke about the wilderness. They spoke about the cross. They spoke about Moses' tabernacle. They spoke about David's tabernacle. They spoke about Ezekiel's tabernacle, uh, temple and Solomon's temple. They spoke about it. And then years went by. Yeshua shows up. He goes to Calvary's cross. And then you hear someone speak about Herod's temple. And Herod put out a decree because prophetically he knew because the Magi's who were worshiping and got saved because they were worshiping the master. They were following the star and that star stopped and they followed it and found it at an innkeeper or at an inn. He couldn't even find a place to go and be born, Joseph and Mary. So in doing so, they were speaking the same things. What was it? They were honoring and worshiping. They brought frankincense, myrrh, and, and uh, some other... Uh, um, gold, frankincense. Uh, yeah. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, and here they, they presented it to him. The little boy was a baby, an infant in a manger. What did, but see, here's the principle. They were magis. They were spiritual men. And they did it because the principle. They were patriarchs. They stood faithful 
to the command that they heard before they were manifested on the planet. They heard the Father speak, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I called you to be a prophet. You go to Jeremiah chapter 1. He says that of each and every one of us. That's the call. We are to prophesy. Why? Because, ooh, I feel the anointing. Why? Because when you prophesy, you can literally turn the condition of the atmosphere where you are present. Because wherever you are, there is, yeah, <laughs> there's presence flowing out of you if you want it to. You can neglect it because what we do is we turn the, our spirituality off and we turn on our carnality and we act just like the rest and then they wonder. That's why they make fun. Because they don't see no solid loyalty to Him. Yeah, your Heavenly Father who will shut their mouth. They'll, he, he, I've seen Him. I've, caused, I've seen the Father cause men to walk off the job around me. Walk off the job. I didn't say a thing. They just walked off the job. And they told the foreman, I can't work around Him. I don't know what it is. I just can't work. I can't stand the F this, that, and the other. But the Father made them walk off the job. I didn't have to do it. I just had to keep my... Mm-hmm. I had to speak things that pertain to the kingdom. And let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Why? There's a reason. Watch this. Go to Proverbs. Old Testament. Old Covenant. We've got to see these verses because these, this is who you and I are, family. Those that are listening, those that are viewing tonight, you, are, do you believe you could be snared by your own words? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, I believe it's there. Hallelujah. Let's see. Whew, thank you, Father. My son, chapter 6, verse 1. My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. And make sure thy friend. What's he saying? You want friends and you want them to turn? When you shake hands, when you remember, that's where they get the slap. Give me five and we're slapping each other. It was a Proverbs. And so when, when we do that and we go out and stretch our hand out as a friendship gesture, you stay in that flow of being united. Since you're in the Father, when you make contact, it's a point of contact. The flow of favor flows through you to the contact of that other person. That's why it says, any two of you gathered, touching anything, believing in your heart, not doubting, you shall have what you ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. You know, when, when he says in your, in your humorous way, you could go to your boss, you're sitting there, you bring him coffee in the morning, something, and you go, hey, boss, let me shake you. I just want to thank you. Then the next time you do it, he puts his hand on your shade, and you go, thank you for that raise, boss. And he'll like, what? And he'll just laugh it out, chuck it off. But see, if you have faith and you believe it, let me read the verse that you didn't believe I just said. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. If you believe it, you're snared and you're, yeah, you see, your salary increase is coming. Your raise is coming. Your promotion is coming. Why? Because according to Psalms, here again, he says in the book of Psalms, he says, promotion cometh from Yah. And I use the Hebrew term instead of the King James, promotion comes from God. So you have to read it. It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from the east, the west, the north, and south. It comes directly from him. And I thought promotion came from heaven. It, way, you know, it worked its way down here and then got around me and then promoted me. But no, he's in you. So if he's in you, then you've got to wait for that. <laughs> you've got to wait for that perfect determined counsel where he said, okay, Robert, you're ready. Now, and promotion came. Promotion came. Stand with me in faith, all of you that are saying, yeah, pastor, but you don't know because uh, you don't know what I go through. No, stand with me in faith. Are you believing for a promotion? Are you believing for a change in your workplace among the, your fellow workers? If you are, 
I'm praying this word. Father, I thank you for your sons and your daughters. I thank you that at the striking of their hand, they will make friends with others. And that will be a bond of covenant. And then when they speak about a promotion, when they speak about a salary raise, when they speak about just the change of atmosphere where it's now it's positive, there's synergy, not negativity. Let everyone be snared with the words of their mouth. And thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Let your sons and daughters know, Father, that you brought them to this point. Until you and I see each other again, I pray that tonight was an inspiring moment that stirred you up to get back in the Word. And don't snare yourself with the words of your mouth. Begin to promote yourself. Why? Because you're a son of the Most High and all these promises belong to you. If you can believe with me, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, whatsoever two of us touching here on earth, believing and not doubting in our heart, whatsoever we ask, we shall have, if you believe. Do you believe? I believe. Till we see each other again, Shalom.